The normal and physiological way of breathing is supposed to be through your nose. The nose is for breathing, not the mouth. Today I'm going to talk about the negative impact of mouth breathing on facial growth, especially in your growing children. Some of its signs and symptoms, its diagnostic tools, and how it can be prevented. I'm Dr. Mariam Horiat at Aria Dental, a holistic, biological, integrative dental office in South Orange County of California. What is mouth breathing? The fact is that most people don't think about how and how often they are breathing. Normal and healthy breathing is when person typically breathes in and out through their nose. However, when people rely on taking air in or out through their mouth, it is called mouth breathing. Why is it so essential to breathe in and out through your nose? When one breathes through the nose, tiny hair called cilia filters out debris like allergens, pollutions, and even small insects, and purify the air through the structure inside the nasal cavity. So the air entering your oropharynx, or your throat, is not going to heavily affect the lymphoid tissue in the adenoids and tonsils, which are the last barrier to catch harmful particles in the air before it reaches your lungs. Mouth breathing does not offer such a protection. Instead, mouth breathing allows the air to pass directly into the throat where adenoids and tonsils are located. So adenoids and tonsils become the first defensive barrier against harmful particles in the air and causes a high risk of tonsil and adenoid infection. Besides clearing the air from harmful particles, nasal breathing also stimulates the production of gases and substances in the nose which facilitate the entry of the air to the lungs and prevent infection in the respiratory system. In addition, nose breathing humidifies and warms the air to the body temperature because the nose has a body structure called turbinate that handles such a task. Lungs and throat function better with moist air, but mouth breathing pulls dry and cold air into the lungs. Dry and cold air in the lungs mixes secretions in the lungs thick and slows down the passage of oxygen to the bloodstream. Mouth breathing has following signs and symptoms. Number one, dry mouth. Mouth breathing is one of the main reasons why some people wake up with a dry mouth and drools on their pillows. Mouth breathing causes more problems than soggy pillows, such as sleep disorders like number two, snoring. Number three, bad breath or halitosis. Number four, hoarseness. Number five, brain fog. Number six, gingivitis. Mouth breathing dries the mouth and increases bacterial growth, leading to a more plaque formation and gingivitis. And for the same reason, number seven, more frequent cavities. Number eight, frequent throat and ear infections. Number nine, very frequent tonsil and adenoid enlargement and infection. Number 10, low blood oxygen level could lead to many medical conditions. Number 11, hypertension or high blood pressure. Number 12, decreased lung function due to reduced ventilation and oxygen intake. Number 13, worsens asthma conditions due to dry and cold air. Number 14, slouch, slummy, poor posture that can cause muscle tension, joint pain, reduced circulation, and fatigue. Most people develop mouth breathing as a very young children, potentially setting the stage for long-term problems such as many unattractive facial characteristics and dental facial abnormalities. And unfortunately, the vast majority of parents, including some healthcare professionals, are not aware of the negative impact of mouth breathing on normal facial growth. Some of these skeletal growth malformations are, number one, narrow and long face, or long face syndrome, which in most cases can be corrected only with orthodontic surgery. Number two, receding chin, the lower jaw, called the mandible, is aligned significantly inward and gradually withdraws toward the neck rather than protruding outwards. Number three, class two facial and skeletal profile. Number four, dental malocclusion or bite issue. Number five, convex facial profile. Number six, high and narrow palate. Number seven, crooked nose and flattened nose. Number eight, tired looking eyes. Number nine, lower front teeth or incisor proclinations. Number 10, lip incompetency or pouty lower lip. Number 11, 
gummy smile or excessive gum display. Number 12, crowded teeth because of not having enough space in the mouth for permanent teeth. Mouth breathing is more prominent at night during sleep. Many of these kids cannot sleep well at night due to mouth breathing and obstructed airways, leading to behavioral problems and academic performance. Studies show some children with mouth breathing develop behavioral problems that are like problems found in children who have ADHD. What causes mouth breathing? There are two main reasons that people are mouth breathing. Number one, habits that can be easily fixed with training, myofunctional therapy, mouth taping, and even some oral appliances. Number two, reaction mouth breathing that happens when people cannot breathe through their nose. Some common conditions that affect nasal breathing include enlarged adenoids. Adenoids are glands that look like small lumps of tissue located above the roof of your mouth and behind your nose. Adenoid protects young children from bacteria and viruses. Sometimes adenoids are swollen or infected, blocking children's airways. Nasal congestion. If you have allergies, colds, or chronic sinusitis, you may have persistent stuffy nose that keeps you from breathing through your nose. Deviated septum. Your septum is a cartilage and bone that divides the inside of your nose into two sides. When your septums lean to one side, it can block your airways. Nasal polyps, which is a very rare condition that causes mouth breathing. How could you prevent mouth breathing and its side effect? We can avoid such a negative effects on facial and dental development if mouth breathing treated early in children. Optimal treatment is finding the root cause of mouth breathing. My recommendation is to consult with your medical doctor like ENT, myofunctional therapist, and your holistic dentist to find the reason for mouth breathing and treat it properly and promptly. Commonly, in dentistry, we use various oral appliances to facilitate proper nose breathing and prevent and minimize mouth breathing and its side effect. What tests can you do at home to check if your child is a mouth breather or not? Lip seal test. This test evaluate whether your child can breathe with a closed mouth or not. Simply place a tape on the mouth and have them breathe through the nose for a few minutes and see if your child can tolerate nose breathing. Mirror test. Hold the mirror under your children's nose looking for clouds or condensation that indicates your child breathing through the nose. Water test. This test checks your child's ability to hold water in their mouth. Simply have them hold water in their mouth for a few minutes to see if they can tolerate breathing through their nose. I hope you found this video very helpful. Please do not forget to subscribe and like for our future videos on a weekly basis for your oral health.